You know we have a crypto panel because the name of our panel is a made up word. Um, tokenization, not a word that anybody was using, you know, even a decade ago. Uh, even after the Bitcoin blockchain was launched, uh, tokenization is even newer than that. So what are we talking about? Uh, we're talking about putting assets on a blockchain via a token. Um, and that's, it's all code. It's all code. Um, now, that's the what, but of course, we're here for something more interesting, and that is the why. What, what are the benefits of uh, tokenizing assets? Why would anybody want to do this? Is there some demand out there for tokenized assets when there's plenty of other uh, traditional assets that you can invest in? So uh, I wanted to start with uh, Dennis to tell us the why from a, from a high level. What are, the, what are the biggest benefits of tokenizing assets? Yeah, I mean, the way we look at things is tokenization really helps with two different things. One is it enables you to do what you already do, better, faster, safer, cheaper, all that good stuff. Uh, and two is it enables utility of assets. In a lot of ways, you know, the assets that you own today just kind of sit there. You know, you are a row in a spreadsheet at some transfer agent in your money market fund. Can't do a, lot of, a whole lot of things with that today. That's starting to change. But the idea of tokenization is around like what you could do with the asset after the fact. And so that could be borrowing and lending. That could be being able to get liquidity for an illiquid asset. It could be things like including illiquid assets in model portfolios more easily. And then we have like a, a North Star vision of like what we're trying to do for private equity which involves you know, a client commits a million dollars to a private equity fund, they put a million dollars in a liquid tokenized model portfolio, capital call comes through, that triggers the redemption or sale of the liquid to fund the capital call. So you don't have an opportunity cost, you don't have the cash drag, and you don't have a phone call from your investment advisor saying, hey, we need to put cash in this account. That's kind of like what we're aiming at. Yeah, that's great. Um... Getting into this uh, this uh, idea of liquidity, and and so so that would be using smart contracts to uh, get rid of some of the manual processes there, which you can do with tokenized uh, assets. Tom, uh, what kind of um, liquidity can be created with tokenizing an asset that maybe is missing in a traditional asset class? Sure. So there's a lot of things that you know that, that come to mind. Um, so one in particular, and I know something that this is J.P. Morgan has done uh, similar work in the space, is the idea of using assets intraday. So typically, when you think about how when when you own an asset, sometimes you know if you have a margin account that can be lent out, or if you're if you're at a you know a trading firm, you can lend it out on stock loan or repo or what have you. Those contracts are you know overnight to open to you know to term dated out in the future. Using smart contracts and, and tokenization enables you to do intraday lending to improve the use of not only your collateral availability, so the securities that are tokenized, but also the funds that you have available. And that's, that's super important. And that's, it's a really nascent market, and it hasn't taken off yet. I think that people don't realize the, you know, the, the power of that to basically to you know, almost double dip in, in, in the assets that you have and, and the way you can you know, both generate revenue and, and you know, create opportunity. So that's something that, that, you know, that we're really excited about. We had done uh, a pilot trade uh, about a year ago or so here in the US with, you know, with a client. We were able to you know, lend money you know, for an hour or so when they needed it. Um, and so that's something that I, I hope to, you know, I have to see more of. So that's, that, that's one example, but there are tons we could go on and on. Yeah, and just to follow up on that, I've just seen some headlines that some stock exchanges are planning to extend their hours uh, so that you can start trading 5 a.m. and go to 11.30 p.m. Of course, that's in response to crypto, which trades 24-7. Uh, and you talk about being able to make, um, uh, get, get somebody liquidity when they need it. Sometimes you need liquidity, you know, in non-banking hours, and that's where crypto can really come in. Yeah, and that's that's a great point. But one of one of the the you know the, the dirty secrets there is that trading systems can do it today. I mean, you can trade stocks, you know, around the clock, pretty much, you know, give or take. You can, you know, they're after hours trading and things like that. It's the infrastructure that sits behind it. So it's the clearance and settlement that takes the time. And when you have integrated infrastructure where you can do that, and that's why I, when I talk about this stuff, I, you know, a lot of people talk about the, you know, 
the sexy benefits. I talk about the, you know, the, the, the plumbing in a way, how you can fix the plumbing to make this stuff better. And that's one example where the trading part, sure, you can, you, you know, that's an easy fix, but once it gets handed off to, you know, to clearing and to a back office, that's when it takes time. So the US you know, equity market recently moved from a T2 to a T1 cycle, which everybody knows. And you know, that wasn't super hard, but to go from T1 to T0 is going to be, and, and the SEC, by the way, well, I, know we, I think we said we weren't going to talk too much about regulation, but the SEC, by the way, had asked when they put out the request for comment um, for the industry to move to T, you know, to T1, it was a 200 page document. The first 70 pages were about you know, T1. The next 130 or so were about T0. And that's really what, where they wanted to get to, but it can't happen. And this, this is the, the way you know, to enable the industry to move forward that way. I would totally agree with everything Thomas said, and I would just maybe add on that it's not the asset side. Like the asset side is not the problem. It's the cash side. You know, everybody's kind of been in a situation where you send a wire or an ACH, and you don't know exactly when it's going to land. And so blockchain and tokenization with its ability to have multiple types of assets on the same set of rails, including cash, gives you that precision settlement like down to the minute or down to the second. In many cases, that you just don't get with traditional financial infrastructure, 